Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the podcast for the recently deceased. I am Rodney Godek. And I'm Nate Roberts. How we doing? I am doing excellent, Nate. Uh, tonight, we are convening our council to discuss the new feature film, Renfield. Written uh, by Ryan Ridley and Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman, obviously, of uh, the Walking Dead fame. Directed by Chris McKay of Lego Batman fame. Starring Nicholas Holt, Nicholas Cage, and Aquafina. Uh, also Ben Schwartz. Schwartz or Schwartzman? Schwartz. It's funny, I wanted to put him in on the end there. Ben uh, Schwartz, seemed yeah. cuter. All right, Renfield. Dracula's henchman, an inmate at the Lunatic Asylum for Decades. Uh, longs for a life away from the Count, his various demands, and all of the bloodshed that comes with them. So, what can I say about Renfield uh, to start us off tonight, Nate? Um, Renfield is a a nice palate cleanser of a movie, considering the year that 2023 has been thus far. I think that people might argue that this was ill-timed, of when it was released, maybe it would be more appropriate during a spooky season uh, in the fall. That's fair. However, because this year has been such garbage, I think that this is a shining beacon of a movie for the year thus far and a reason to still hang in there for the genre. I think that it's fighting for it. Uh, it is not without faults. Uh, the star of this is Nick Cage. Um Alongside Nick Cage and what he does, uh, you can also say thank you to insanely over-the-top gore and effects and fight sequences. You can say thank you to a good bit of comedic timing and dialogue and writing that occurs through the film. Um, nice early on uh, throwback homage to Bela Lugosi uh, and the original Dracula movies that they kind of recreate in black and white uh, as characters. And uh, all of those things are in working in, in tandem together to kind of make a, a serviceable movie that shines in many ways and but is hampered by a few things that make it uh, fall short of greatness. Really could have been. It has all the bones and structure to be great. Plenty to enjoy for horror and or action. It has plenty of horror elements. Uh, so for Renfield, I am landing at a 6 out of 10. For a uh, a year such as this, uh, what are we uh, almost done with our fourth month? Um, mm. oh, and and horror has, has, you know, we keep bringing it up. It's 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 no secret that um, the horror movies this year are are pretty bad, um, bad to middling, and. Um, mm -hmm. We have to be thankful for a movie like Renfield uh, because it seems like uh, the horror comedies, um, and don't get me wrong, this is a comedy, uh, action comedy horror, um, right? Uh, they're, they're taking it right now. They're doing their work. Uh, between yeah. Renfield, Cocaine Bear, and Megan, probably the best three movies in the genre uh this year uh, it's okay i'm gonna get it out <laughs> baron post no nope, uh, mention. <laughs> go uh, on <laughs> so with that being said uh we've got some good comedy some good comedy some good timing um we have the um the perpetual i just smelled a fart look uh from aquafina through almost the entire <laughs> film <laughs> i i love i love aquafina um but like but like you know how like uh actors have like a look or like a thing that they always do in all their movies no matter what <clears throat> she has that her look is like the i just smelled a fart <laughs> and it wasn't me it wasn't mine uh look um the gore is over the top excellent i i normally i bitch and complain about um cg all the time mm -hmm. uh not in this case it was used so well um 
you know, unapologetically over the top, and yeah. they all so so much so that they were obviously having fun with it, and that's where that's when, you know, doing something like that with CG isn't like isn't like oh it's so fake it's oh it's so blah it's not supposed to be real it, you know this this instance we like the absurdity and yes. it's almost it's almost com it's gore it's gore comedy it's, it's like comically over yeah. the top yeah. they're intentionally making it absurd and they're aware they're in on the joke they're not yeah. living in realism and trying to make like the coolest sickest blood effect it's yeah. we know this is dumb have fun yes yeah it's it's malignant level gratuity yes, yes, yes. exactly um a pretty decent story um overall like uh i like once again like you said um so nicholas holt is the prote- is the protagonist but mm-hmm. nicholas cage is the star he doesn't have as much <clears throat> screen time but he steals the show his over his Nick Nick Cage style over the top performance of Dracula is excellent. Mm-hmm. Is excellent. Um, overall, just a fun movie. Uh, I would say you would be mistaken to uh, to pass on this one. I gave it a seven out of ten. Perfectly uh, acceptable rating. I, I'm. I'm right on board with you. And yeah, I, it's frustrating because I think a lot of people are cool on it and not feeling it. I believe currently uh, audiences obviously clearly like it. It's at an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, critics are at a six, uh, 59%. So I get that there's a rub. There's a conflict here. Uh, people, for some reason, I don't know. It's weird. It's like it's this big blockbustery type movie. Uh, and I don't know if it's that people want to dislike it or they don't want to have fun. But I think maybe it's just not hitting the right notes for some people. It's this the same. Maybe it has the same kind of phenomenon that we also felt with something like *Malignant*, where it's like people aren't in on the joke for some reason. They don't get that they can let their hair down and have fun. Yeah. I'm not sure. That maybe that's what's going on here. And it's not as if I want to die on that hill, but that could be a little bit of what's going on. Um, it's just it's too bad that it didn't um better use its its star and do something amazing because a lot of amazing things are happening. It's just, I think you said the story was, was decent or, or good. I think this, the story kind of like hampers it a bit. I think the story could have been changed as far as pacing, like oh. the events I'm fine with. It's, it's, it's a weird, dumb story and I'm okay with like what actually is occurring. It doesn't bother me. I just think that maybe if it would have just been retooled to give more time with uh, Renfield and Dracula, uh, as far as the setup, and him regaining his power and then like let that last act be he's now full power and those events happen quickly instead this movie did like uh he fully gets power within like the first third and then like second and third act are he's full power and now he's not in screen time now there's all the other stuff going on all the noise with the the lobos gang and all that yeah which again sidebar creative and fun choice to have this lobos gang have this wolf as their icon in this this traditional wolf horse vampire type mythos that exists in the horror genre it's a fun background setting that makes it more fun i don't know if you noticed but the one uh mustang that they're driving uh the wolf that's on it is snorting a line of coke uh, like that's like right there it's like snorting the coke really fun touch um that's the only thing is like the pacing it just is it's it's off the that first part where nick cage is is doing all of the he's wearing all the makeup and uh the effects and he's talking to renfield about what he's been doing or what he's got to do and they're talking about the kind of uh victims that he wants to come back to him and the 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 busload of cheerleaders cheerleaders, and they talk about like is it a woman thing he's like don't sexualize it it can be any gender like (laughs) it's so nick cage over the top and it's beautiful i wish there was more of that and i just feel like they shorted it a little bit there's enough of it to enjoy but they could have done more less aquafina and nicole they're great but just a little bit less more nick Right, uh, but also, also, I feel like Nick Holt was under underutilized. The guy's an, yeah. uh, an excellent actor, and yeah, okay, he was Beast in those X Men prequel movies or whatever. So yeah, okay, he he, you can get him in a fight choreography scene, and he's sure. gonna he's gonna do it well. Um, but that's all he fucking did in the movie was fight. It's like I know it's, like it's hilarious because he did like <laughs> the same thing that Beast did in those yeah, movies where he's like, just like jumping yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and ripping like, people apart. Yeah. yeah, it's hilarious. But yeah, he could have done more. 
there was a throwaway line that I laughed at in the audience. And I don't know for you, how many people were in the theater? Mine, I had, there was maybe like a dozen people and there was a couple old biddies. I'm like, what are they doing in here? This is a weird matinee that I saw it on Sunday, <laughs> but I was like, there's an old lady in here. What's going on? Um, there's a throwaway line that I laughed at. No one else laughed at uh, where uh, it's later on in the movie when Aquafina is recovering from the escape. He brought her back to his apartment and um, he's like offering her snickerdoodles. Yeah. And she's like, uh, he's like, which one do you want? She's like, uh, give me the one that doesn't look like shit. Doesn't look like like, shit. He's like, I don't know which one you think looks like (laughs) shit. Like if he just says it honestly and earnestly, like, but like the timing of the way he says that, because you can picture like someone's looking for a cookie and you're looking at like, they all look the same to you, but someone thinks one of them looks (laughs) awful, but you don't know. And he's vocalizing that sentiment. But the way it was written, it's throwaway in a lot of instances, but it's, it's actually kind of. Uh, very clever and funny yeah. the way that it was done. I laughed out loud yeah. and no one else seemed to get it in my theater. I was kind of like, come on guys, that was hilarious. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't find myself laughing out loud too often. Um, I definitely smiled a lot at some really decent one-liners uh, throughout the yeah. film. Um, you know, and mostly from Aquafina, I feel like she's got really good timing, good delivery and, and you when you write Aquafina, I think you write for her, like because she, she has a, a very like certain style or a cadence to to the way yes. she talks that you want to utilize that, um, and I think they did uh, very well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so the quick premise, uh, if anyone that hasn't seen it, uh, you know, modern day uh, Renfield is Dracula's caretaker, and he's like, you know. He's the guy that's responsible for making sure they go from place to place whenever shit hits the fan and ultimately people try to kill them and you get a flashback. Recently, he almost got killed by some uh, vampire hunters, but Renfield saved him. And uh, so now they had to they find themselves in present day New Orleans and Renfield is regaining his strength. And Nicole has to Renfield's bringing him Dracula's regaining his strength. Renfield's bringing him bodies to do that. And uh, they find themselves wrapped up uh, inadvertently in a drug cartel type thing in New Orleans. And so there's a random background story. Uh, but Renfield is learning through a support group that he needs to separate himself from his uh, his codependency of taking care of, of Dracula. And so it's his journey to try to do that. Uh, and things go south and sideways. And ultimately, there's a final showdown. And uh, he overcomes his demons and... and uh, dispatches Dracula uh, to uh, great effect. So uh, it's a fun story. It's neat. There's a lot of noise and random shit that happens that's unnecessary. Like I said, there's a lot of the whole thing with the gang. It's a weird premise. It's fine, but like it's it, you could have used less of it to do more of Renfield and Dracula. Yeah. Uh, so it's fine, but I just it was a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. We also could have, you know, like I get the rom com. Uh, Sure. side of it where Renfield is the is the redeeming character who doesn't want to be evil anymore um, but man like Nick Holt Nick Cage like you could have had a fucking like buddy cop style Dracula and like goofy sidekick kind of thing going on for, mm-hmm. like, for like the first third like act one could have you know or even act, like yeah just stretch it out into the yeah. second act and more before he gets his full power because they did it for the first third Whenever they're talking about the victims that night of what he wants, it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, with Dracula not at full power, like, like you could have thrown him in the passenger seat of a car. Like, like Dracula is the foil in, in that buddy cop, mm-hmm. uh, their, that buddy comedy scenario. And, and Nick Holt is the straight man. And you could have had, you know, a good, like, half hour of, like, hijinks, like, <laughs> where they're, like, trying to get him, like, you know, innocent victims and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Scoping them out or talking about them or what yeah. he wants and like his weird tastes and then like interacting with different characters or things and just funny quips. There's even a scene, uh, cause you saw, did you see the unbearable way to massive talent? I didn't see that yet. Well, you remember the, you've seen the trailer where he's like, Nicholas fucking whoo cage. Like, and he does the woo. Like yeah. he does the woo in this movie. Yeah. He's like talking as Dracula and he's like, <laughs> ah, and he like says something else. I'm like, it's just Nick Cage. This is yeah. awesome. It's so yeah. perfect. <laughs> I, I I love the accent he did because it wasn't like quite, uh, it wasn't like quite English or quite Italian. It was kind of <laughs> somewhere in the middle. And yeah, definitely and it's not just him. Romanian. 
<laughs> it's God. just perfect yeah, uh, I loved to it. have him <laughs> in the casting. And it's what saves the movie because if it wasn't him, it wouldn't be anywhere near as good. It probably wouldn't work in a lot of ways. Uh, right. And it's underutilized it. So, um, but super enjoyable. Uh, the action scenes, it, dude, some of the, the gore and the over the top, the, throwing someone's arm as the, a javelin. The arm, the arm spears were so cool. <laughs> And then, and then Aquafina pulls one out of the wall and starts attacking with it, like, like <laughs> yeah. you know, you've seen, you know, you've seen super supernatural people attack people with body parts before, but never just, you know, your your average everyday beat cop pulls an arm yeah, out of the wall. And I, I want to say it. that that's a lot of the that's a lot of Chris McKay as the director coming through and utilizing all the absurd robot chicken stuff that he was also a part of before right. that. <laughs> To kind of be like, yeah, we can do anything, you know. So yeah. let's just have fun and do anything and make it uh, just wacky. Uh, <laughs> I love the scene where he. Um, so it's before the werewolf fight in the in the bar, right? Mm -hmm. Where where he's we've seen him go to like I think two meetings at this point, mm -hmm. and you know that like, yeah, okay, it's it's a they call it they call him a codependent. So he's like going to these they're similar to AA meetings, but it's it's right. like an addiction, right? And mm -hmm. so you know he's like trying to kick this addiction of Dracula and and you haven't seen him feed Dracula in a while and he looks over and there's a group of nuns and then he looks outside <laughs> and the bus of cheerleaders drives by but then all the cheerleaders get off the bus and come into the bar for some reason yeah. and he's like he's like like a fucking heroin addict and his drug dealer just walks into the room he's like like he's like, yeah. <laughs> like exactly what he asked for is lining yeah. up. I can do everything that he wanted right now, right so now. easily. And or, so he's just like, oh, fine, like, I guess I, I will. I gotta get he out of here. Form ready. Right, right. Oh my yeah, god! Oh, yeah, he does and get dude, in. the ska stuff. Oh, the ska jokes. <laughs> One that's ninety nine percent horns. The they ska went jokes. Literally joke after joke after joke <laughs> about ska, and I'm like. I'm dying because, like, I get it. Like, yeah. I love Scott, and she's like, <laughs> the Scott jokes are like, so isn't absurd. that stuff that's ninety percent horns? And she's like, uh, that's an oversimplification of the such and such. And, and it's like, a... oh my god, listen to me. Is she because it's <laughs> Who him? Am I? She, it's her boyfriend <laughs> that had loves Scott. And oh my god, that was wonderful. And then they get to the place, and uh, you hear the Scott music, and they're listening to it, and he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> we think he's there to get the drugs back and then the power goes out and the one guy's like i was getting to the best part <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just like they went hard on this dumb random joke and it was perfect yeah yeah it was uh, it was very did, very funny like a random thing you would never you who writes that like it just comes out of nowhere it doesn't really make sense but it's super funny with the way that it was written the way that it was delivered uh the way that it was edited uh Wonderful touch. And that happens early on in the movie. It makes like the parts where they meander in that second and into the third act. It makes those where you sit through them because you know how wonderful it was. And then you get the big fight scene with the arm spears. And like it keeps you it keeps you strapped in and having fun. But it just was a little bit you know, that's been our whole thing in the past couple several episodes. There's a lot of unevenness with some of these films. They're so close. Some of them can't are closer than others, but there's an unevenness to them that stops it from being perfect. Um and this, then that's what this one has. But man, some of those jokes, it was so enjoyable. Like, and yeah. I was I, smiling and, and just giggling like a little girl with all the ska stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm glad I, I remember that. I actually did. I, yeah, I, I forgot that I laughed out loud for the ska jokes. <laughs> it was great. They were uh... like absurd. Like, it was so just silly that they were even in the movie. And so yes. I was like, so I was like surprised laughing, but also like that was a really well written joke laughing. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. It it was uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, overall, uh, definitely check it out. Go see it while it's still in theater. Okay. Get those numbers up there so we can yes. keep getting of some good horror movies. Hopefully, yeah. If I'm looking, if I'm making a list of movies that you should definitely see this year, it really is Megan, Scream, and Renfield. Uh, there might be another one in there, but as I'm doing top five so far, they're all those three are definitely up there. Yeah. Um, Megan Scream, so, Redfield, Cocaine Bear. Again, reminder. <laughs> Whoa, Cage. Um, I'm gonna redo the list and put Cocaine Bear in the middle so he can't take it out. <laughs> I'll cl Hey, I've been practicing just cutting shit. I've cut a lot of stuff just because I sound stupid right, or ready, I make ready? a mistake. S scream six, <laughs> Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Renfield. <laughs> uh, All right. I, know. I gave it a seven. I, it. 
Yeah, I gave Renfield a six. So for episode 12 of the podcast for the recently deceased, I'm Rodney Godek. And I'm Nate Roberts. Take care. And we'll see you next time.